Hi folks, Mario with Silver Lungs. One of the biggest topics I feel needs to be better defined and explained is what is colloidal silver, and I'd like to explain the many different types of silver solutions available. Today, the facts and claims made concerning colloidal silver solutions are quite confusing and poorly defined. Because there are so many different types of solutions, you, as a savvy consumer, must be aware in order to make an informed decision when considering the purchase or production of a silver solution. The facts and details claimed about silver solutions are usually avoided in order for companies to accommodate the popular lingo used by most, who only know one keyword, colloidal. It doesn't seem to matter what particular type of silver solution actually is, the common street term is colloidal, so no other distinction is ever made, and one seldom understands the truth about the silver solutions they produce or purchase. Getting started, I'll now discuss the different silver solutions available and further define them, as some are safer and more effective than others. Starting with the easiest to describe type of solution, I personally like to reserve the term true colloidal silver to mean a solution comprised of pure water and pure particles of silver where the silver is not chemically bonded to anything else and is simply found in its pure metallic state. This is what most consumers have probably assumed a colloidal silver solution to be, but as we look closer at the other types, we'll see that true colloidal silver solutions, as I've just defined, are only a small fraction of the silver solutions sold today. After 10 years of research on this topic and exhaustive testing of the various products available, I found that the clear majority of silver solutions sold today are without question ionic silver. Ionic silver is defined as a solution comprised of pure water as well, but with silver ions as the silver species in solution, rather than pure metal particles as mentioned previously. Ionic silver is by far the simplest form to produce and can be made in large volumes with very reliable consistency. We need to note that a silver ion is absolutely not the same as a silver particle. Although they're both very small and can be seen as a particulate of sort, an ion is a considerably different silver species as it is the only type that carries a positive electrical charge and is also the smallest form of silver that can exist. A silver ion in solution is always 0.23 nanometers in diameter and there are no other sizes found unlike particles of silver that can range from two atoms in size all the way up to billions of atoms in size. An ion is defined as a single atom of silver missing one of its negatively charged electrons, which shifts it into a positive state. The chemistry denotation for this silver ion is Ag+. There is a unique advantage with this type over all others due to its very small size and positive charge, but keep in mind, this form is very reactive and is many times better suited for specific areas of administration where it will not bind with other substances and form far less effective silver compounds. In general, we suggest true colloidal silver for internal administration as particles do not combine with other chemicals, and for external use, this is where we suggest ionic silver. This is because in most cases, external environments, such as topically to the skin, are far less reactive as would be within the stomach. Our next form of silver to discuss is called mild silver protein. This is a very highly concentrated type of silver solution with concentrations well in excess of 500 ppm and many times as high as 50,000 ppm. Keep in mind that traditional ionic and colloidal silver solutions rarely exceed just 50 ppm. These high concentration protein solutions incorporate a type of gelatin polymer which allows for greatly increased silver content. While protein silver solutions qualify as true colloidal solutions, recognizing that the silver content is pure, non-charged metal, their downside in most cases is the presence of considerably larger particles than lower ppm ionic and colloidal solutions. Large particles are what we don't want, especially when administered internally. As well, these particle sizes become less consistent and more exaggerated when protein silver products get higher and higher in concentration, so we generally suggest lower PPM protein silver solutions as a safer and more effective choice. It should also be noted that protein-based silver solutions have always been at the top of the list for causing a permanent discoloration of the skin called argyria. While argyria is biologically harmless, it is a profound change in the color of skin tissues, which is hard to overlook and in most cases impossible to hide. Next on the list of silver solution types is citrate silver. Citric acid is a hidden ingredient in some silver solutions, where the citric acid allows for greater concentrations upward of 200 ppm. While I don't consider 200 ppm terribly high or unsafe when used responsibly, 
I do need to mention that any time silver is combined chemically with another substance, it can be assimilated differently by the body and can cause unpredictable results. It's fair to note that in recent years, silver citrate has also been found to cause isolated cases of argyria when used in excess. Although these cases are very rare, and I don't want to imply this to be a highly risky type of silver solution, I do want to mention that citric acid, as well as the protein polymers mentioned previously, are almost never stated as ingredients. Silver solution manufacturers choose to keep it as simple as possible in their descriptions, so their products appear to be nothing more than water and silver. When patents are claimed by a silver solution manufacturer, we can sometimes find further information on how a solution is produced and what else it might contain. Something to note concerning patents. In many cases, the patents are actually for special devices rather than patents for what is produced in the final product. In cases like this, I find it quite deceptive to promote device patents on silver solutions, as this can clearly mislead the consumer to think that the solution is what is patented and unique, when only the device is the scope of the patent, which is ultimately not our concern. In the few patent cases I've found where there is claim of something unique produced, I find a complete absence of any real scientific literature provided to substantiate these claims. Moving on in our discussion of different colloidal silver variants, fulvate silver is another type, similar to citrate silver, except that fulvic acid is used as the hidden ingredient to produce higher concentrations than normally possible. Isolated incidents of argyria have been tied to this type of silver as well, but when used responsibly, it is generally found to be safe. Silver solutions incorporating silver and oxygen in various arrangements are our next type to discuss. These would be loosely termed as silver oxide solutions. Silver oxide solutions are produced when bubblers are used as the primary stirring mechanism in a hobby-type home generator kit. The constant bubbling of the solution adds trace amounts of dissolved oxygen, which combined with the dissolving silver ions during production, and the compound formed is denoted as AGO. This is simply one atom of silver and one atom of oxygen. AGO is a very unstable form of silver, and a solution that is initially rich in this type will slowly begin to change back to ionic silver after the production is completed. This simply means the oxygen and silver have separated, which leaves free silver ions and dissolved oxygen that eventually evaporates over time. Another type of silver oxide, denoted as Ag2O, will often form during production when there are high levels of hydroxide, which is a byproduct of some silver generating devices that create high pH solutions. Although Ag2O is yet another unstable form of silver, it will often remain stable during undisturbed storage, but will again rapidly separate into free oxygen and free silver ions when ingested into the harsh chemical environment of the stomach. In essence, most silver oxides never remain as silver oxides once administered, and these solutions should ultimately just be considered ionic silver solutions. Our last form of silver oxide to discuss is Ag404. This is a rare form that requires far too exhaustive of an explanation to describe its chemical makeup and how it is produced, yet many silver solution companies will promote claims that their solutions contain AG404, when again, this particular type of silver oxide is extremely rare. There are currently no confirmed AG404 solutions actually available, other than those synthesized from a laboratory at exorbitant costs and in amounts far too small to accommodate the colloidal silver retail market. This silver type gained quite a bit of recognition back in the mid-90s when a scientist patented this silver compound, calling it tetrasilver tetroxide, and made claims that it could deactivate and neutralize the AIDS virus through processes of microscopic electrocution. After that time, many silver solution manufacturers hopped on the bandwagon and started making claims that their silver solution was comprised of this special silver and oxygen compound. This isn't hard to believe when remembering again that there is no regulation or accountability in this particular market for claims made and that laboratory testing to determine true contents of a silver solution is very costly. This is one reason why we simply don't see silver solution manufacturers under scrutiny for their claims. Hydrosol is another very popular term applied to some brands of silver solutions and this was one of the very first trademark type attempts used to imply this solution to be different than traditional ionic and colloidal silver. Numerous tests over the years by various sources, including myself, have shown this to be primarily ionic silver with traces of silver oxide. This type of solution is what is produced in most home silver generating devices. Finally, we come to the latest craze in the silver solution market called nano silver. In a previous video titled, What is Nano Silver? I provided a detailed account of the origin of this term and how the name gained popularity in recent years. In short, I explained how and why all silver solutions on the market qualify as nano silver, 
and that nano silver is just the latest marketing term used by some silver solution manufacturers to imply this to be a new form of silver. I also went into detail concerning the Ebola outbreak of 2014 and how government agencies worked against the use of silver supplements in Africa, as silver nanoparticles were found to neutralize the Ebola virus in a declassified Department of Defense study back in 2008, six years before the recent Ebola outbreak. The widespread use of silver supplements would have thwarted the mega-billion dollar pharmaceutical efforts that were claiming to be tirelessly at work to find an antidote, while a demonstrated antidote was already discovered by our own government back in 2008. All of the silver solution types I've discussed are readily found in today's market, yet determining the true composition and makeup of a silver solution is often difficult, and only testing of the various solutions can help make an accurate determination. In a following video, I will outline some very basic yet reliable testing methods for helping to identify what types you may have so you can be better informed of what you're buying and consuming. If you do consume and rely on silver supplements often, you should consider making your own silver solutions from home with the industry-leading Silver Lungs Generator. The Silver Lungs Generator allows you to produce endless ionic and true colloidal silver solutions with full control over the production from beginning to end, leaving absolutely no guesswork. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so we can update you when our latest videos are released that further discuss the big world of colloidal silver. Thanks for watching.